I just want to clarify what I'm talking about when I talk about grace today. I'm not talking about the thing that you do before you eat a meal. You put your hands like this and you thank God for the food, bless it to our bodies, that kind of thing. That, not that kind of grace. Um, I'm not talking about like a descriptive word for somebody who maybe moves with grace or like a bird. Wow, super graceful bird. Like, I'm not talking about that kind of grace. Um, I'm talking about the free gift of grace from God through Jesus Christ. And so, so what is grace? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says this. God saved you by His grace when you believe. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Somebody say gift. From God. Uh, grace is a free gift from God. And so why do we need grace? We need grace because sin separates us from God. So we, when you have sin, you, sin and, and God can't reside in the same place. And so what happened? Adam and Eve sinned, and sin, we were living in a fallen world. In, um, in James chapter 2, verse 10 says, I do not have a son of sin. For the person who keeps all the laws except one is as guilty as the person who has broken all of the laws. And so what, what does that mean? That just means that we're guilty. But Jesus, somebody say Jesus. Jesus came, and He wanted to restore the relationship between us and God, humanity and God. And the price, the bill that He had to pay was our lives. And so He gave His life for us. He paid the bill. He, you were sentenced to death, and Jesus came and said, "I'll, I'll take your sentence upon myself for you." That's the grace that I'm talking about. The, the free gift of, hey, you can live in eternity with God. You don't have to live separate from God. You guys kind of starting to understand what I mean by grace? Somebody say grace again. Who said grace again? Some of you said grace again. Good job. No, you listened very carefully. Good job. Now, grace from God, it's a free gift. God freely gives grace. We receive it by faith. It says, when you believe. And so... What you need to know today is God's gift of grace is free, but humans, we're not always as good at giving grace to people who need it, are we? I got a lot of ease for that. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> grace, but for me, grace doesn't always come so easily. Sometimes people drive like morons. I'm not always so quick to give them grace. Sometimes I need a quick meal, so I go to a fast food restaurant, and it's not very fast. I'm not always so quick to give grace to people who are giving me slow food. Sometimes people come to me and tell me their problems, but then they don't do anything about their problems, and I have a hard time giving those people grace because you know what you're doing. Stop. Stop it. And so, so what, so, I have a hard time giving grace sometimes. We can all get a little better at giving grace. Amen? So, here's, here's the key for today's message. When you have God's grace, you have all that you need. God's grace is all you need. It's all you need. So, when you have God's grace, you don't have to be perfect. That's point number one for those of you taking notes. When you have God's grace, you don't have to be perfect. I think I think Christians get stuck in sin. They get stuck because they sin one time, and because they think they're supposed to be perfect and live up to a certain standard, they give up trying. Because I failed, I failed, so why try at all? And so, and because you failed a little bit, you might as well just keep on going. But you know, when I when I get myself a bowl of ice cream. I give myself, I pour one scoop, and I'm like, man, that's enough. But since I'm getting ice cream, I might as well give myself a bunch more. And sometimes we do that with sin. Sometimes we take a little bit, and we're like, you know what? My, I, did, I failed already. Not that ice cream is a failure, by the way. Um, I failed already. I might as well just, I might as well go all in. You don't have to be perfect. God, God's grace is the reason you don't have to be perfect. Jesus was perfect for you. Amen? So, should we, now should we just not try at all? No, we should, we should strive to be good. We should strive to be, to be good people. 
to show love to others, to be joyful. We should strive for those things. The problem is when we fail, how do we respond? How do we respond when we fail? Do we stay down? Do we live do we live in guilt and condemnation? If you if you're trying to be a Christian and you and you're feeling guilty all at the same time, it's a it's a hard it's hard to walk through the front doors of a church. It's it's hard to face make eye contact with the pastor when you feel guilty and, and you're feeling condemned, even though the Maybe the pastor didn't do anything, but you just have this sense and this feeling of guilt and this weight. God's grace is what lifts that weight. Amen? You don't have to be perfect. And listen, people people in this place, in this building, we will not judge imperfect people. That's not the type of church we are. Amen? We don't, we don't judge imperfect people here. We don't live by the world's standards. We live by God's standards. And so, let's encourage those around us. That, let's, let's give, and I'm jumping ahead of my message a little bit, let's encourage some, some imperfect people. Listen, you don't have to be perfect. If you're imperfect, you're just a candidate to receive God's grace. Amen? Amen. So, somebody say number two. When you have God's grace, your name is registered in heaven. You have God's grace, your name is registered in heaven. Luke chapter 10, verse 20, Jesus says this, But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. So now I think we get, we get confused, and so I'm going to give us a little bit of an illustration, so just track with me, okay? I think we get confused in, in what it means to have your name registered in heaven. So I want you to imagine a line through the middle of the stage. And on this side, you're in God's grace. Your name is registered in heaven. And on this side, your name is, you're not in God's grace. Your name is not registered in heaven. Now, that, that's a scary thought. But here's the thing. When you're, when you're on this side, if you've received God's grace and you sin, you don't automatically hop back over to this side. Sin doesn't doesn't get how did I would it how did I write it down? You don't hop back and forth from being a Christian or from being in God's grace to being out of God's grace. When you realize that Jesus paid the bill for you, it changed it changes who you are. And so what what really what really happens here is we think that we sin and all of a sudden now now we're going to hell. So I gotta read my Bible, I gotta go to church. I gotta do all the right things, and then, and then, then I'll be back over in heaven again. I gotta profess my faith at an altar on Sunday morning, and then I'll be in God's grace again. That's not how. That's not the gospel. Jesus came and paid the bill for you, so that you would be changed. Imagine this: you're walking down, you're crossing the street, and you, and the car is flying at you, and you don't see it. And somebody behind you shoves you out of the way and dies because of it. That's going to change your life, isn't it? That's going to change the way you look at your life. And you'll be forever grateful for that person who jumped in and saved your life, gave his life or her life for you. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us. And go ahead, give God a hand, cup of praise. So God's grace doesn't end if you sin. His grace ends if we stop receiving it. So if we if we are changed by the gospel, if we're changed by the fact that Jesus came and stood in our place, we're not outside of God's grace. But the moment that we stop receiving God's grace and, and stop and, and give up on the, the, the life that Jesus had for us. That, that is when you, that's when you get over to this side. What am I trying to say? Sin, whenever you sin, that doesn't mean you hop back over to this side. What it means is when your life is changed, you live a changed life. If you recognize what Jesus did for you and you're not, you don't live a changed life, not that you don't sin, we're all imperfect people, right? Not that you don't sin, but your life is changed. And so, changed people don't like their sin. Changed people don't like their sin. 
If you perceive, if you perceive God's grace today, let me make this very clear. If you perceive God's grace, your name is registered in heaven. When you have God's grace, this is the heart of my whole message today. And then, yeah, the heart of my whole message is when you have God's grace, you can give it to other people who need it. People need grace. Let me tell you something. I need grace. I have, I'm so thankful to Jesus. I have God's grace. But I also, I could use some grace for some people, from some people too. People offend other people. People wrong other people. Sometimes unintentionally. I want us to be a people who live with grace, who have received grace to give grace. I joked earlier about some people who maybe I, I'm slow to give grace to in the drive through line of McDonald's or when they're driving like morons. But the reality is, is I was given grace to give grace. Given grace to give grace. Colossians 3.13 says, Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. See, I think the, rea- the reality is, a lot of people, when they're doing dumb stuff that they shouldn't be doing, they know it. They don't need you to come and tell them all the dumb stuff that they're doing. You shouldn't be living this way. Well, they know that. What they need is some people to say, Hey, I know that you're struggling right now. I'm here. I'd love to help you. Come, come, come this way. God has enough grace for you. God has enough grace for you. I, I, I just want to say that very clearly. I don't know where all of you are at in your walk and of life, but there's, God has enough grace for you. So, I need a volunteer. Isaiah, please come on up. Somebody give Isaiah a hand. Down like you were <laughs> we did this in the 9 a.m. He gets to do it twice. So, Isaiah has fallen, and he can't get up. <laughs> that, was a, that was an old commercial. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so, Isaiah, Isaiah's fallen. And I just want to, this is an illustration of what not to do. Isaiah, you shouldn't have done what you did. You deserve to be fallen down, broken, busted, and disgusted. And then you walk away. That is not what we should do. And so here's where this here's where this illustration gets really good. So I'm gonna help him up, and this is this is the good part. This is the hey, you can do it, buddy. Great. And so I'm now I'm gonna lie down. And so here's the thing. Sometimes we look at people when they're laying down and we and we look at maybe somebody who's strung out on drugs or somebody who's begging for money, and we look at them and think, oh, well, they deserve all the ridicule and all the things that are happening to them. They deserve to be where they're at. Maybe if they didn't make those choices, they wouldn't be where they are. But I'm going to lay down, and I, I've fallen, and I can't get up. <laughs> and what what's the illustration here? Sometimes we think that grace is unfair. We think grace is unfair until we need it for ourselves. So Isaiah, can you please help me up? Thank you. Grace is so much more powerful when you realize that you need it for yourself. We think grace is unfair. We think people are deserving of it, and if you give them grace, it wouldn't be right. That's not fair until we need it for ourselves. And man, how powerful is it to receive grace? Amen. All right, Isaiah, thank you for your good job. Somebody give Isaiah a hand clap. The heart of my message today is this. Give grace. I want us to be a church who gives grace to other people. Now, I need to be very clear. If, if grace, God's grace is enough for you. So when I did that line illustration hopping back and forth, if God's grace hasn't changed your life, then you're not in God's grace. If God's grace has changed your life, and you can't, there's, you can't help but give praise and honor and grace out that He's given to you, then that means you are changed by God and your name is registered in heaven. Amen? 
grace, when you fall, grace allows you to get up again. If you've fallen and you're in sin and you're feeling broke, busted, and disgusted, God's grace is enough to lift you up again. Amen? And I think it's super powerful. Now, for those of us who have received God's grace, I think it's so powerful to see people who may be struggling and to just give them a little dose of grace. To say, I see you, and I love you, and I care about you, and listen, you don't have to live this way anymore. God's grace is enough for you, friend, who's down right now, who's feeling broke, who's feeling terrible, who's struggling, in, maybe in relationships, maybe financially, maybe in a broken marriage. God's grace is enough to help somebody. And we, as carriers of God's grace, can distribute that grace and say, hey, I know it doesn't look good right now, but here, let me help you up. Here's the, here, here let, me, let me give you a hand. God's grace is so powerful, and we can be the type of people to actually minister that grace to others. The love. You guys know, love has been misconstrued. Never mind. I didn't, I, never mind. I, listen, love, love is such a powerful thing. I think the greatest showing of love, Jesus says, is to lay one's life down for somebody. Jesus did that for you. He loves you. And the least we could do is give some grace to people who need it. I want to, I want us, I'm believing, worship team, you guys can come on up. I'm believing for a city to be changed from a place of judgment and ridicule to a place of grace and forgiveness. And it can only, listen, it can only be done through Jesus. He's the, he is the only one who has enough grace to do something like that. And if we want to see a city change, if we want to see people, if we really want people's lives to be changed, we need to be the type of people, the type of Christians to just give people grace, to give people forgiveness. No whole grudges. It's kind of cringy anyway. Like, just give forgiveness. I would rather see somebody, I would rather see somebody live victoriously knowing that they wronged me than somebody living broken and I'm just, and I'm, holding a grudge against them. I want people to live victoriously. I want people to, to win. Amen? So, listen, if you want to stay cool this summer, <laughs> going back to stay cool, if you want to stay cool, give grace because you've been given grace. There's something, there's something that about giving grace that just brings your soul to rest. It's exhausting to, to not to hold on to grudges and hold on and be judged and judging people and holding things against people. It's so much easier to just give grace to love people. And so, so the best way that we can help people live victorious lives is to give grace. I've said that a lot, but I think it's so powerful. 